people are one in front of justice. That is our stand. The Quran is clear about that. People are equal in the face of justice. Just like Deborah Yakubu, who was killed on Thursday, May 12th, 2022, by an angry mob for alleged blasphemy, many people have also lost their lives to such barbaric acts. Blasphemy is generally defined as the exhibition of irreverent behavior or language towards God, religion, or anything held sacred. It is a sensitive issue for many, especially those who have an unshakable faith in their beliefs, religious leaders, holy book, places of worship, and rituals. Nigeria operates with two judicial systems. Both systems have punishments for blasphemy. The constitution provides a customary or secular system and a system that incorporates Sharia. The customary system prohibits blasphemy by section 204 of Nigeria's criminal code. Section 204 is entitled insult to religion. According to the section, any person who does an act which any class of persons consider as a public insult on their religion with the intention that they should consider the act such as an insult and any person who does an unlawful act with the knowledge that any class of persons will consider it such an insult is guilty of a misdemeanor and is liable to imprisonment for two years. However, the Sharia court may treat blasphemy as deserving of several punishments up to and including execution. Many Nigerians are unaware of the blasphemy law in Nigeria. The northern part of Nigeria has had various cases of persons killed due to blasphemy. Images of certain Muslim groups who adopt harsh punishments against people apparently blaspheming against Islam or turning apostate are displayed horrifically as certain misguided Muslim groups are attributing teachings to Islam that have nothing whatsoever to do with it. This is Sheikh Imam Nuruddin, popularly known as the Digital Imam. Reacting to the harsh treatment of persons over blasphemy, he said the Sharia court needs to be looked into, adding that no one has the right to take the life of another. To me, Sharia is something that we have to sit down and look into it critically in Nigeria, especially we the Muslims. The Sharia move claimed some innocent lives in Nigeria. Uh, look at our cordial relationship with others and our existence. What will be the, 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 the future of our existence if we say we want Sharia and people don't understand to give us that opportunity? I think we have to look into that. A cleric has no right to pass a judgment. There is a constituted authority. If the, 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 the best he can do is to register his complaint to a judge, to a, a competent court of justice that this person has violated uh, a certain rule, uh, um, a certain decree or a certain uh, prohibition of the constitution of Nigeria or whatever, then he went for judgment. So I'm not in support of anybody giving verdict other than uh, the, the judge. The most recent case was that of Deborah Yakubu, a 200 level student of home economics at Shehu Shagari College of Education who was lynched by fellow students for alleged blasphemy against Prophet Muhammad. It was alleged that she shared an offensive message in a school WhatsApp group which drew the ire of students who overpowered school security, beat her to death and set her body on fire. According to a source, she was accused of making a social media post that blasphemed the Holy Prophet Muhammad. She was asked to withdraw the statement and apologize, which she refused. The school security intervened, took her to their post, but they were overpowered by students, after which she was killed in the process. After killing her, her remains were set ablaze and burnt beyond recognition in the school premises. 
In a similar situation in March 2021, some angry youths backed by leaders in Sade community in the Darazo local government area of Bauchi state burnt a man identified as Talimai Ruwa for alleged blasphemy. He was alleged to have insulted Prophet Muhammad. It was learned that the angry mob dragged Talimai Ruwa out of a police post in the community where he was initially kept before killing him. In 1995, Gideon Akaluka, an Igbo merchant, was beheaded for allegedly desecrating the Quran. He was arrested and imprisoned by the police in December after his wife allegedly used the pages of the Quran as toilet paper for her child. But a group of Muslims allegedly broke into the prison, killed him, and walked around the city showing off his severed head. However, no one was arrested for the murder of Akaluka. Also, in 1999, Abdullahi Umaru was murdered for alleged blasphemy against Prophet Muhammad. Musayaro was said to have furiously raised his voice and read an excerpt from Rai Salah, the Islamic edition, and then passed his sentence. He who insults our Prophet Muhammad must die. You, Abdullahi Umaru, who insulted the Holy Prophet Muhammad, must therefore pay the price for your crime. You have to die by the sword. After his statement in the village of Randali in Kebi state, a group of fanatical Muslims led by Yaru and Abdullahi Adar nailed Umaru to the ground and beheaded him. The Supreme Court of Nigeria in Abuja sentenced Adar and others involved in the murder to death. In 2016, Bridget Agbagini, a 74-year-old tableware dealer, was brutally attacked and killed in Kofawambai Market in Kanu by a mob of Muslims who accused her of blasphemy. She was reportedly attacked and beheaded after refusing to allow a Muslim man to wash in front of her shop. This act cut deep into Nigeria's religious and tribal fault lines. The five perpetrators were however arrested for her murder, but five months later the suspects were released. According to the Kanu government, there is no case to answer because all the suspects are innocent. That's how the case eventually died. A 50-year-old Muslim man in August 2008 was beaten to death in Kanu. It was alleged that he made a blasphemous statement against Prophet Muhammad. The man was killed in the Sheka Achi Lafia neighborhood when several angry Muslim youths besieged his house and beat him to a coma. It was alleged that he made blasphemous statements towards the Holy Prophet after his relatives denied him a share of the property left by their deceased father. He died shortly after a team of Hizba police and officials rescued him from the crowd while he was taken to the Mutala Mohammed Specialist Hospital. In March 2007, Christiana Oluwatoin Oluwasheshin, a mother of two and a teacher at the Government High School of Gandu in Gombe State, was beaten to death by a crowd of Muslim students and local extremists. Oluwasheshin was appointed to supervise the Islamic Religious Knowledge Exam. When one of the students wanted to enter the examination room with his books, Ulua Sheshin collected them and threw them outside the exam hall. The student claimed that one of those books thrown outside was a copy of the Quran. This statement caught the attention of thugs known as the Young Kalara Boys who stabbed her to death and also beat up the headmaster, a Muslim who unfortunately escaped for offering her asylum. The thugs burned down three school blocks, the school clinic, the administrative block and the library. The then Gombe State Governor Mohamed Danjuma Goje, however, ordered the immediate closure of all secondary schools in the state. Three persons were also arrested in connection with the murder. They were arraigned before the Federal High Court Gombe. These are just a few of the cases where people have been killed for blasphemy. Justice for them remains mostly elusive. The question is, when will this impunity end?